Hello and welcome to this edition of India in 2.0. I'm Nain Tara Rai. Today, I'm coming to you from the head office of Shadul Amarchand Mangaldas & Co. My guests today are the fourth generation of one of India's leading law firms, carrying a 100-year-old legacy forward. Let's find out what the daughter of Shadul and Pallavi Shop, Shweta Shop, and her husband, Naval Chopra, are planning. Right, so let's get down to it. Let me introduce you to my guest today. We've got uh, Shweta Shroff Chopra and her husband, uh, Naval Chopra. First television interview. Don't be nervous, guys. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us over. Um, I'll begin with you, Shweta. Um, you know, how easy or difficult was it uh, being born to the parents that you have been, to the lineage that you come from? Is law in your blood, in your genes? Did you always know that you were going to be a lawyer? <laughs> So um, I think this is, I mean, the most oft asked question. Um, I come from a family where I'm the fourth generation on both sides. So there is a bit of the blood and the DNA. I couldn't contest that. Did I always know if I wanted to be a lawyer? Um, I think, you know, seeing the passion in all my sort of grandparents, my parents in whatever they were doing, you know, it really made me feel that their work was How making a difference. How old were you when you knew you wanted to be a lawyer? Anecdotally, if you ask my parents, I was three. Okay. But I think it, <laughs> it's a bit much, it's a bit later, it's around sort of seven or eight, where I started realizing that what they're doing is actually helping people, making a difference to things. You knew when you were eight years old that because you wanted to be a lawyer? I think this is one thing which I will really credit my parents for. Um, you know, they would come and discuss what they were doing. You know, when you were eight years old? Yes, and I do that the same thing with my son. When, you, when you're spending hours away from your children, mm. you know, um, it's important that they feel that the hours spent away from them are meaningfully spent um, and you're doing something to make a difference. So I, I give all the credit to my parents because they would always discuss obviously confidentiality based uh, things but they would contextualize it for an eight year old. Okay. You know they would say about disputes, contractual disputes saying this was a promise and it was broken and this is how and I would give my two Anna's worth to whatever that context was. So it, it's is she always, calling herself a prodigal child over here? <laughs> <laughs> Is, she, is that no, what she's doing now? But I, I, I honestly think, I don't think I had much to contribute at that stage, but it Obviously got me interested. Eight years old. <laughs> but, but, but it made, got me very interested. So you, sure. knew, by the, you were eight years old, you already knew. Naval, you know, you don't come from a family of lawyers, uh, but you're making your mark in law. When did you know that you were going to be a lawyer? And did you guys meet in law school? So um, I knew when I was about 15 or 16. I was very lucky because my uncle, Behram Vakil, who's sort of name partner at AZB, uh, was one of my mentors growing up and then I had two other phenomenal lawyers Ryan Karanjawala and Arun Jetli who were very close uh, family friends and sort of through them I got inspired um, to take up law as a career and it was when I was actually in high school uh, that I met Shweta um, I met her at the finance ministry while I was interning with the current finance minister uh, and I was all of 17 Arun Jetli. yes uh. I was all of 17 she was 16, and um, this was the 12th of May, 1998. You remember well, that right date? <laughs> and, 20 years and, have passed. And literally, on the 21st of May, I said, Shweta, would you like to go out with me? And she said, no, no, I'm a good girl. I don't do these things. <laughs> and it took, uh, it took about 24 hours for me to convince her, and then we sort of, you know, we started our journey together. So that was your first day. Did your parents come to not, Chaparro? It was Did no they date. come to Chaparro? Trust me, it was no date. It was just a very sweet gesture which made my heart melt. He wrote me a poem. Look I at Shweta blush. She's still, <laughs> she's still blushing. Yes. So, but now tell me, you know, to get more serious, um, how easy or difficult has it been to work for your father, to be the boss's daughter in a professionally run law firm? So I think, um, you know, it's never easy when you have big boots <laughs> and big footsteps to follow in. But I think all our lives, my parents have always said that, you know, um, you're only as good as your last mistake. So work hard. Give every job that you have a 100%. So we've, both Natasha and I, and I think Naval kind of has grown up with us. So I think mm -hmm. we've all kind of grown up with that philosophy that you put your head down and you work and you're only as good as your last mistake. Um, I think in addition to that, when we came back to India after working abroad, 
Uh, we felt so you guys did a stint overseas? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I mean, I think that, that was a personal choice. I don't think my parents were really in favor of it. They would have had their way. I would have been back just as mm -hmm. soon as I finished university. But I wanted to prove to myself that I'm a good lawyer. Okay. And that's really important to me. Um, and having come back, we made it very clear to our parents uh, that we want to actually work, mm. we establish our names in our professional space, and then we see what we are as, as a second generation or third, third generation in the family, okay. uh, in the firm. So uh, I think that's the point which I would think that, yes, it's hard, but it's hard for everybody. To some extent, the pressure is higher because there is... Are there more expectations from you? Of course, there are more expectations from, from us, you know, both in terms of how we come across and, you know, the kind of work we do, the sort of relationships we have with our clients, but also what we are sort of, you know, doing role modeling in terms of the firm. And I think both Naval and I and my sister Natasha, we are all very conscious of that and we try our best to do the best we can. So Naval, tell me, you know, you, your mother-in-law is Pallavi Shaw, your father-in-law is uh, Shadul Shaw. Uh, how was it coming in here and to be accepted and then to make everybody feel, yeah, I'm one of you, I don't, you don't have to consider me as part of maybe, you know, the promoter family of the firm? Um, both of us are very clear that when we return to India, we want to have our own independent identities uh, because the firm was also evolving at that stage. You know, mm. we've gone from that family model to now a purely professional model mm. where every lawyer has to prove themselves. You know, we're not a manufacturing outfit where it doesn't matter. You know, the expertise of the individual doesn't matter to a large extent. Here we have to be accepted by our clients. We have to be accepted by our colleagues and we have to be accepted by the market. So it's something where, you know, who you are and how you perform uh, is what is relevant. Yes, um, you know, parents, in-laws, relationships get you through the door. But staying in the door and thriving there is all based on your own hard work and yeah. intellect. So did you have to prove yourself? Like, did you start at the bottom? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, not only did I start the, at the bottom, but I think, you know, when it came to sort of making the decision to whether we're ready for partnership, uh, I think, you know, my peers went up ahead about three or four years before I did. So I think it was the, the sort of underlying philosophy of my parents has been that you should be so ready that no one can contest it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, think, I think the greatest advantage that um, the family has provided us is you know, teaching us that hard work and humility is all that matters in the, in, in the context of your progress at the firm. Um, we were both, in some sense, held back for a year before we made partner. Okay. And we accept... Oh, you, you guys were held back? Yes. And we accept... Like that, that whole philosophy you said that nobody should be able to contest it. Absolutely. And, and in, in that sense, uh, our acceptability is much higher. But that said, you know, None of us believe that we're entitled to positions in management or anything of that sort. Um, we, as, as I said earlier, we're a professionally run and managed firm and we want to, we pride ourselves. How many on partners now? 110. 110, how many associates? Um, we're about 400, uh, 410, 420 associates. Yeah, well, I think number is 527 in all. Uh, I can Never see she is. <laughs> she's correcting you there. Does that happen often, Shaitan? You have to correct him often? All in good cheer. All in good cheer. Okay, now, you know, we have to take a short commercial break. But before I do that, you said your parents would um, explain cases to you that they would uh, make it uh, understandable to an eight-year-old. Well, you have two young children. Uh, give me an example of how you may have contextualized a case to them and made them understand. So the, the Google case was an easy one for us to do. Yes. Um, and um, I'll never forget, uh, we were driving with a foreign lawyer uh, from Delhi to Agra. And um, my seven-year-old sort of started talking to him about the Google case, not knowing that this lawyer actually represents Google. <laughs> and at one point in time... Was it the, embarrassing? <laughs> the, the embarrassing bit comes here. At one point in time, he said, you know my father, my father is going to bring Google down. <laughs> and we just had a huge laugh about it. But you know, Shweta is absolutely right. This interest, um, they understand uh, why we're away from work. They understand and develop an interest in things around them at a much earlier age. And so it's great. We don't talk shop between ourselves at home. Never. Oh, you don't take work never, home? Never. never. 
I think that's a boundary. There are two boundaries that we have. One, we never work on the same case. Okay. We value ourselves and our marriage far too much. Um, and the second is that um, we don't take work home because it's too So if you have to burn messy. the midnight oil, you both will do it in office, just not take it back. Yeah. So with that, we're going to take a short uh, commercial break. But stay tuned. You're watching India Inc. 2.0. We'll be back in less than two minutes. Welcome back. You're watching India in 2.0. I'm Nain Tara Rai. Uh, here are my guests, Shweta Chopra as well as Naval Chopra. So guys, before the break, we did promise our viewers that we were going to talk about uh, one of the most uh, famous or infamous uh, splits, family splits that have taken place. I'm of course talking about the one with uh, Mr. Sil Shock. I'll come to you first. How was that on a personal level as well as a professional level? He is your uncle. Yes. So, you know, Unfortunately, times like this happen to every family. Mine is not the only one. Uh, and mine won't be the last. Um, it was hard. I won't lie. I won't deny it. It was hard to see our families being talked about in the newspapers yeah. and um, also the whole litigation. But we've passed that. It's water under the bridge. And you know, it's, been at, it's happened at a good time, perhaps, in our lives. And the firms have done well. Um, and you know, it's also brought the five of us, my parents, my sister Natasha, Naval and I much closer in building this now Shardul Amarchand Mangaldas. Yeah. So uh, I think, you know, it was, a lot of, it was a lot of pain, but we've come out through it and you know, the future is really bright. And there's no contact? Um, there's contact on a daily day. basis between our firms. Mm. We're constantly opposite each other on transactions. Sometimes we work together on transactions. So there is, uh, there remains a lot of contact. But you know, just to pick up on Shweta, yes, there was a split. But I think for everyone involved, um, the outcome was positive. Um, I think for the firms, um, you know, each firm has been able to. Um, go down the, its chosen path with its vision. Um, so, you know, it's been, it's been great for everyone involved. Um, yes, it was unfortunate, uh, but the outcome has been positive. How wrong was uh, the press or how right was the press when, you know, all those stories were being written about how maybe, you know, the two uh, new law firms that would come out of this were trying to get the best of clients, the biggest of clients, or just the details of the split. How wrong or right did the media get it? You know, to be honest, we just stayed away from the media. We stayed away from the newspapers. We're lawyers and it's our business to keep things confidential. And that's what we did. So looking back at it, uh, do you think, you know, as as the next giant of this law firm, do you think it's always now maybe incumbent to make sure that a succession plan is in place, Shweta? I think as any professional organization needs a successful succession plan. It's not a family-owned firm only. And I think that's, uh, that's the first, first misconception I should clear. We are not 100% family-owned. Mm. We are a partnership with several partners, several equity partners. Um, and the succession planning is going to be on a professional level. Mm. Um, and, and I think that's really important to bear in mind because the best man for the best job or the best woman for, for, for the best job yeah. should be chosen. And I don't think that's necessarily a, a factor of you know, who you're born to. Today, when you talk about India Inc., um, a lot, there are a lot of family-run businesses which now talk about uh, uh, having a proper succession plan. Is that true? Because you guys would have actual insights to it because of your clientele. I think increasingly um, businesses and um, companies that are family owned or family managed uh, are looking at uh, succession planning, um, have seen the uh, benefits of succession planning or indeed when there is no plan in place. You know, uh, There are umpteen number of examples through corporate India, a lot of clients who we've advised who have you know, passed away without a will. I think that is definitely coming to an end. Um, I think what um, you know, people who are currently in the reins of companies must do is they should discuss the succession plan with their children now. Unfortunately, what happens in many a case is that the succession plan is only made evident after a person passes away. I think India Inc. should do away with that. But uh, do you think it's being done away with? I, I, I honestly think that, you know, a succession plan is actually for a meaningful engagement of the next generation. Because, you know, you may be born in a family, but if you don't know what you're going to do when you sort of this thing, it's about preparation, it's about thought process, it's about, you know, uh, bringing the next 
sort of professional level of you know achievement for the organization we know that a lot of families business families from small to large are actually thinking about this very seriously talking about things like family constitutions family councils so that as the family grows across generations they are all meaningfully engaged and have a role so is that also a big business uh, for the law firm yes it is yeah. so both of you have decided that to have a uh, of expertise in competition. That's the right. competition was maybe the sunrise sector, the hottest uh, space within the... Still is. Is, <laughs> all, is it? That's exactly what it's going to come to. Yeah, I think so. I mean, if we look at it from the perspective of global evolution of competition law, we are one of the youngest countries. I mean, countries like the US are still making waves in competition law and they've been um, around for 110 years or so. So, you know, I think competition law is evolving and the best part is it's not just law, it's law and business, it's law and economics. It's, it's so ingrained in the way people do business, it's never going to go out of fashion. In fact, I think it's become more and more important and because businesses have realized how important it is. So it's no longer lawyers telling them that competition law is important. Mm. Today, business people, you know, when they're penning down a deal are asking, what about the competition angle of it? Do you think the CCI will bless this transaction? And, you know, globally. Yeah. And, uh, you know, now let's talk about some of your big cases. Uh, Shweta, you, of course, did the Vodafone idea deal. It's like one of the biggest deals yes. uh, to have landed and to have successfully closed. Uh, what was it like at the CCI? Because I feel like my memory serves it right. Uh, it was uh, the first uh, regulatory approval and in record yes. time. So yes, I think it was uh, it was a very interesting case because this was number two and number three in the sector coming together by volume to make number one, and that's always challenging from a competition standpoint. Also, the telecom sector is generally kind of concentrated with a few number of players, um, even though you know the entry of Jio really helped the situation. Yeah. I think the what was interesting about the case from a perspective of a lawyer uh, was that. You know, you've got to go very deep into the sector. You've got to understand how it works. And this is true for any of our cases. So would you say that's your biggest case so far till date? Yes, definitely one of my biggest. One of your biggest? <laughs> Maybe more in the f more in the office. Are you going to tell us about it? <laughs> <laughs> Can I coax you into it? <laughs> Maybe later. <laughs> okay, so that has been uh, Shweta's one of her biggest cases, the Vodafone idea merger. Novel, I would imagine yours is uh, the Google Bharat matrimonial case, uh, India becoming the second jurisdiction ever to find Google? Yes, I mean, that was the most challenging and sort of headline grabbing case. Um, but I think there have been others which haven't been as well publicized. So PVR's acquisition of DT Cinemas, for example, where PVR's market share was going from about 38% to almost double mm. um, in South Delhi. <coughs> and that was a 10-month process, which was one of the most challenging deals to convince the CCI that with minimal divestments, allow this deal through. Um, the recently concluded by a Monsanto transaction. That took a while, right? That, that took a while, and you know, and with... And with India was holding it up at a global level? Well, India and Russia sort of mm. pa paid spoil sport, but you can understand, the, you know, given agriculture, yeah. given how important the sector is to India, um, and this was the fourth of a whole series of agrochem um, transactions. Uh, so yes, um, you know, on the merger control side and on the abuse side, uh, those are some of the big cases we've been involved. You said competition would never go out of fashion, Shweta. What about insolvency? That's certainly in vogue right now. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, insolvency has finally come of age, I guess, in our country. Um, and the first few sort of cases and I think the insolvencies, how they are resolved right up to the top will settle the issues. Um, but I think this is good because, you know, finally... But it doesn't, it's, it doesn't pique your interest? You don't want to specialize in it? Oh, it does. But it? I, I, I actually do the competition side of the insolvency. So okay. I've, I've been involved in the Dalmia Binani um, merger filing. Uh, our firm's been involved in some of the others like uh, JSW Monet and um, also, uh, I think, Bush and Steel. So okay. we've been involved in quite a few of them. Um, and you know what's interesting is I get to sort of, this is an area I get to work with my dad very closely, so it's very special. Because he's he's doing a lot of the insolvency work himself. He's pioneering the practice. And so do you have to always listen to him? He's the boss? I think we have a healthy debate. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Can agree to disagree? <laughs> okay, okay, with that, we're going to take a short commercial break. But stay tuned, you're watching India in 2.0.
Welcome back. You're watching India in 2.0. I'm Nantara Rai. My guests today are, of course, uh, Shweta Shot Chopra as well as Naval Chopra. So, guys, as we come to the last segment of this interview, uh, you've told me about how your father is uh, spearheading the insolvency uh, cases in India. But, you know, the law firm right now in this Aftar is still pretty new. It's not yeah. that old. So, so we, what are your big achievements, you would say? So we say we're a three-year-old startup based on a hundred-year-old legacy. Okay. Um, and, you know, when, when, after the split, uh, we first opened our new Mumbai office. Mm -hmm. And we've been very fortunate that in the last three years, our Mumbai office is now almost 200 lawyers. Okay. And, um, you know, we didn't have a target number as to how many lawyers we wanted. We wanted to grow based on the quality available in the market to hire, as well as client requirements. And um, from sort of 2015 when we split to now, we've almost doubled our size. Uh, we've gone also from uh, four offices uh, to seven. Yeah. And uh, we've been involved in some of the marquee deals. We've been very fortunate that the clients have had faith in us. Um, so, you know, for example, uh, soon after we started, we handled the Maggie controversy for oh, the Maggie case. Uh, okay. Nestle. Yeah. Um, more recently, we've been involved in the entire Tata mystery fight on behalf Which of side? the Tatas. Okay. The right side. There's the winning <laughs> side. Uh, okay. um, and even on the m and side, you know, we've got a lot of traction with private equity clients, with um, some of the PSUs, so we, we do uh, most you of the Blackstone. You do the HPCL, HPCL. That's right, that's right. right. Um, so uh, we've been very lucky with the people that we've got in the firm, as well as the clients. And you know, for the first time um, in the last 20 odd years, we've actually been able to realize the potential of one firm across India. Hmm. Um, you know, we've, we, we ensure that the best lawyers across offices are staffed on the deals uh, for point. the clients. So but would that have been one of the biggest challenges as well, Shweta, is that uh, after the split, obviously your side of the family's expertise was in New Delhi and the networking was in New Delhi, whereas your uncles would have been in Mumbai. So to forge those relations, would you say that would have been one of the big challenges? So I think, you know, my, my parents are not sort of newbies. They are <laughs> veterans in that sense. Um, so the relationships have been largely family relationships. People have known my father and my uncle equally. You know, when we when we took the decision to sort of invest in Shardul Amachan Mangaldas and sort of make it a success, everybody went all out. You know, as I said at the beginning, our people are our greatest assets. And we've been very lucky with the with the people that we have in in Mumbai, in Bangalore, in Chennai, who've just sort of fit like a glove into our system. And it's also our system has evolved and changed. Where today, you know, we have Akshar Chudasama in Mumbai. He's not a family member. He's one of the leading corporate lawyers in India. And he and my mother-in-law, Pallavi, who co-manage the firm, do everything together. And that's a fundamental shift in how we work and that's brought great synergies across India. Yes. Okay, I'm talking to two of the young brightest minds that you have in uh, law at the moment. So I also wanted to speak to you guys a little bit if, if you want to give advice uh, to budding lawyers who are in law firms at the moment. I'm sure you know they would look at success stories like yourselves. So what would be the, what is your advice to kids who are in law firms at the moment? Well, I would say that, you know, when you enter, a, you know, the legal field, experiment. See what different areas have to offer. You know, don't get stuck at the beginning unless you know very clearly what you want. Mm -hmm. And if you do, then ride it out. Because I find that, you know, sometimes we get bored easily. We want only the sexy deals, but you've got to ride it out. Um, because the career span you know, brings out such interesting cases. I mean, the cases, I've had years where there's been no interesting case, and there have been years where I have had multiple interesting cases together. You would like it when everybody's fighting, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, I'm very non-contentious and non-confrontational as a person. So no, I but you would like it when the corporates are fighting it out with yes, each other. Or, or looking for opportunities to grow, and I think that's, that's the thing. And, you know, um, the other adv piece of advice I would give is find yourself a good mentor. A mentor makes all the difference. Mm. And, you know, um, it, 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 a mentor is a person who's invested in your career and not your job. Would I be right in imagining that your parents were your mentors? Yes, but I have to confess, I have many mentors, not just one. Mm. And, you know, different people are good at giving different pieces of advice. Um, your grandparents and, have played a big role. Absolutely. And I think, you know, um, my grandmother, 
she her voice rings loud in my ears even today let me also uh, ask you another question which i'm sure kids in law schools will want to know when you go to recruit what are the qualities you look for um i'll be very honest it's attitude everything else one can learn no like what you want them to be what feisty so or i think uh, it's definitely it's important to have somebody who knows what their thoughts are what they you know have a clarity of mind because there are so many confused sort of people so clarity of mind is something that i really would like to i look for the other thing is a is a an attitude which is i can do everything it's not just somebody who's looking to do only the high end work because life is not that you've got to grub in and put your hands into the mud and work and that's how it is you know uh, when we do cases you know there are times when aval and i are sitting and sort of making sure the sets are in order uh, to go to the courts you know and and that's what you got to be do roll up your sleeves and you work and that's the kind of attitude you need i think just connected to the two questions i think you know people discount how important working hard is yeah. work hard read be interested and don't forget that your career will be 40 or 50 years long young people make such a big mistake thinking about oh why am i not getting promoted this year why have they said i'm getting promoted next year forget about all of that love what you do be passionate be humble and the rest will all follow And with that I'd like to thank both of you for It's taking the time out and uh, giving me your first television interview. Thank, thank you. you so It's much. a pleasure. Thank you. So much. Thank It's you. a real pleasure.